Hi everybody, I thought I was done reviewing inexpensive MP3 players because in general, it is a punishing experience. However, somebody actually requested that I review the Ruizu D18. And I don't know if they were wanting a good laugh or if they really were interested in the product, but I took it seriously and ta-da, here we go. There has got to be just some standard Android-based music player software out there that everybody uses because the software package looks exactly the same to me. Maybe it's different under the covers, I don't know, but you've got your basic music playing features, video, picture display, FM radio, ebook reader, uh, voice recorder, step counter, a bunch of stuff you don't care about. However, I'm going to go over the overall experience of using this for the stuff you really do need, like the music player, the FM radio, and uh, actually that's about it. Well, I don't know why you would use this to watch a movie. The screen is too small. Um, uh, same with eBooks. Nobody, who would read a book on this thing? Nobody, absolutely nobody. Just, it, it's... This is open source, right? Just get rid of all this junk that you don't need. All I want to see is the music player and the FM radio and, and just the setup and the Bluetooth and stuff like that. Just the basic maintenance things and the core functions. That's all we want. Nobody wants this other stuff. Let's start with a product tour. First of all, this is not a touchscreen. It looks like a touchscreen is not. Same as most of the other products in this category. All the action comes with these buttons down here, and when you hit them, they light up to show that you hit it. However, most of the time, your finger is on top of the button, so you will you may never notice the thing lighting up because your finger's on it. The D18 comes standard with 64 gigabytes of internal memory, and that is probably enough because you can only index the first 4,000 tracks anyway. However, if you are using a lossless format or you're doing voice recording or you have reasons of your own, you can expand this with another 128 gigabytes through this micro SD slot here. It's a little bit hard to see, but there is a power button here and a volume up and down here. Pretty standard for an Android player. As is typical with an Android player, these controls only respond if the screen is on. If the screen is timed out or the unit is powered off, then you must wake it up with the power button here. Navigation is a real mixed bag. Sometimes it is fast and impressive, and other times you are waiting and waiting and waiting and wondering if you really hit the button or not. And I think it has to do with context. If you are navigating within an application, everything is fine. If you are launching a new application or trying to multitask, good luck. For example, let's go into the settings menu. At the moment, we are in the main menu, which is its own application. If I want to go to the settings menu, I navigate and then hit the middle button to select. And we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and I'm pretty sure I hit the middle button, but I'm not exactly, and I, do I hit it again? Oh, there it goes. That's just an example. It, it shouldn't take that long. Another thing I don't like, and this is so typical, I don't know why it's this way, but can you read the selected item? I cannot. The only way I can read this is if I navigate away from it, and then, oh, language selection, okay. So point number one, you shouldn't have to navigate away from a menu item to know what the menu item says. I And I realize that your eyes are probably younger than mine, but you'll get here and you'll hate this too. Right now we are in the settings menu and navigation is snappy, just the way you'd want it to be. Let's go into the speaker option. Comes right up. Speaker's on right now. Let's turn it off. Everything's working great. Let's go back to the main menu. Waiting and waiting and waiting. Did we hit the right key? I'm not sure. Okay, there it goes. And that was actually on the fast side from what I've seen. You might say to yourself, I have a lot of patience. I don't mind waiting if I hit a button and it doesn't come up right away. Well, 
you might. Let's say you hit this settings button and you say, why isn't anything happening? I'm gonna hit it again just because I'm not sure I hit it right. And sooner or later it will come up and I think, yeah, and then it, then it dives into the menu option that was under the button. See, it remembers your key presses even though you can't tell anything's happening. And that could, maybe you would even format the device accidentally. Who knows? There is another usability feature that I realize is not their fault. It's completely an edge case for people who are used to the Apple click wheel. This is not a click wheel. These are directional controls. If you treat this like a click wheel and, you, and you're trying to go around to the next, it's just, it's just moving your cursor around. I agree, that is my problem, not yours, but it's there for people who are used to that interface. The core function is, of course, the music player. Now it will play, just say, all formats. Any format you're likely to have, it will play. In fact, they don't even list all the formats it'll play. It'll play all the common formats, just just say that. One feature I always look for in a music device is an equalizer, but you won't find it in the settings menu. You will find it in the music application, but you have to do a little digging. It is not in the main menu of the music application. Go into Now Playing and then choose the Context menu. And there you'll find the equalizer. The equalizer has the usual presets, but if I'm tuning my headphones, I always choose Custom. And this has a very nice seven band custom equalizer. Despite music playback being the core function of this device, I. I don't know how deep I need to go into reviewing this because every inexpensive Android-based MP3 player has the same software. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. It has playlist support, bookmark support. Uh, you can play by genre or artist or... my. The only thing I ever do is shuffle play all tracks, and this will do that. This doesn't come with a screen protector, either pre-installed or in the box, but I honestly don't care about that. Battery life varies greatly depending upon what you're doing with the device. If you are listening to MP3s using wired headphones, you can expect up to 40 hours of playback. If you're using the internal speaker, that drops way down to 10 hours. If you are listening to the FM radio, or using Bluetooth earbuds, that drops down to six and a half hours. So yeah, it's a big difference. They do give you these earbuds and they are not the worst I've ever heard, but they're among the worst. <laughs> you do get some additional tips to customize the fit. You, it's, it, I mean, they're not terrible. They're not terrible, but they have very little bass and they have a, tangle attracting cord that's not great. Uh, so basically, you probably already own better headphones, and if you don't, um, well, this will get you by until you get good ones. How do I rate the Ruizu D18, given that it is functionally identical to every other product in this category? I would say this has a an excellent build quality. So take that into consideration. Also look at the prices for other players in this category. And given that, I would give this a three out of five star rating. Thanks for stopping by.